What is going on people? Today I'm going to explain overloaded constructors. Overloaded constructors allow a class to have multiple constructors with different parameter lists, much like overloaded methods. They enable an object to be initialized in various ways. Here's a demonstration. We are going to create a new class. Let's go to File, New, Java Class. We will create a class for users. We will create a user class. Let's say that users have three things. They will have a string of username, a string of email, and an integer int age. Let's say that when we create a user object, these three fields are optional. If these three attributes are optional, we may or may not receive them when we construct a user object. So let's do this. Let's create a constructor if somebody were to create a user object with just a username. To create a constructor, we type the name of the class, in this case user. We need to set up a parameter for our username. We will receive a string of username. We will assign this .username equal to the username that we receive as an argument. Let's go back to our main Java file. We will create a new user. Let's say user, user1 equals new user. We're receiving a warning though. In order to create a user object, we have to pass in a string of username. Let's say that our user is going to be SpongeBob because that's the first thing that came to mind for me. We'll use this constructor where we have a username. We can also set up the default values for our attributes too. Let's say this.email equals a string of not provided. This.age equals zero. Going back to user one, I will output the following. User one dot username. User one's email user one's age. Here's what we got currently. Username is SpongeBob. Email is not provided. Age is zero. These attributes were optional. When we construct this object, we're just assigning them to some default values. What if we create a user that has an email? Well, we could create another constructor with the same name, but we need a different set of parameters. This is very similar to method overloading. You can have methods with the same name, but they need different parameters. Not only do we have a string of username, we'll have a string of email. Our email attribute equals the email that we receive. We can use either of these constructors depending on the arguments that are passed in. Let's create a second user. User, user2 equals new user. The username will be Patrick. Patrick's email is, let's say, p star at. Patrick is probably still using AOL for some reason. Let's say AOL.com. Then we'll print user2's attributes. User2.username, user2.email, user2.age. Here's what we got. We have all the attributes for user1 and user2. Patrick, p star at AOL.com. Our age is still zero. We can create different objects with a varying number of arguments. Let's create a third user. This time we'll have a parameter for our age attribute. I'm just going to copy this because I'm lazy. We'll have an int age. We will assign our age variable with the age argument we receive. We'll create user3. User, user3 equals new user. Username will be Sandy. Email will be scheeks at gmail.com. Then an age, let's say 27. Then I'll print user3's attributes. User3.username, email, then age. Here is all of Sandy's attributes. Username, email, age. 
let's set up a constructor that accepts no arguments. This will be kind of an anonymous profile. This uh, username will equal guest or a guest profile. This dot email equals not provided. This dot age equals zero. Now we could create a user object, then pass in no arguments. User user four equals new user. This time we don't have any arguments. Then I'll display user four's attributes. Username. Email. Age. Here's what we got. Username guest. Email not provided. Age is zero. In a way, by creating an object and passing in no arguments, you can set up some default values. All right, everybody, those are overloaded constructors. They allow a class to have multiple constructors. They just need different parameter lists. They enable objects to be initialized in various ways by passing in a varying amount of arguments. This would be great in a situation where some fields are optional when creating an object. And well, everybody, those are overloaded constructors in Java.